Spyro Updos Rage, aka Gateway to Glimmer, is the sequel to Spyro the Dragon, released a year after the latter. They brought new changes to the series by adding new abilities to Spyro's repertoire. Mandatory boss fights and the whole characters would later appear in spin offs before the Legend of Spyro Reaper. Some of the older fans of the series would consider this to be the best of the series in the early days, but it all depends on the player. The story takes place sometime after the first adventure. Spyro and Sparks decided to take a vacation to Dragon Shores, but were intercepted to Avalar mid war by Alert of Wrong, Hunter the Cheetah, and the Professor. The Alvarian trio are explained to Spyro by the sorcerer called Ripto and his lackeys, crushing Gulp how they got to Avalar, and wreaking havoc in Avalar due to the fact that Avalar has no dragons. So the trio decided to get the dragon to Avalar, which eventually led to with Spyro and Spark's situation, and ask him to help collect power orbs to power up a gate and talismans to get rid of Victor. Spyro and Spark decide to help the people of Avalar collect the gems and power orbs so they can get back into the vacation. The gameplay is still pretty much the same, but it is given some new stuff and removed some of the old stuff too. This time, Spyro can't dodge well, as the L1 and R1 buttons are now used for camera controls, but can now hover by pressing triangle while gliding, Pick up stuff by using his mouth and spreading them out as projectiles as well as swim, climb, and head bash stuff. However, these latter three abilities can only be unlocked permanently by paying a rich looking beard named Moneybags whenever you run into him in the levels themselves. The power ups of Crypto's Rage have expanded from a powered up fire breath to a wide variety of abilities like a super charge, a super jump, and limited flying giving Spyro different ways to complete some side missions which usually gives you an orb for your troubles. However, to activate the power-ups themselves, you have to collect orbs by killing a certain amount of enemies. The hop worlds are now reduced to 3 and thus there are fewer levels to go through this time around. The levels are also revamped to include the talismans, cutscenes, and Mario 64 style side missions. Thus, players of the series can enjoy the humor used in the game before starting a level. The talismans are collected at the end of a level, so there's no need to search for them. Also, there's the first game in the series to have auto save by going through checkpoints, but you can also save your progress by selecting the save option in the pause menu. The first stage is easier than the first game due to the added abilities and small amount of levels to go through, and despite the fact that the bosses are a bit of a challenge, but manageable. However, not everyone is going to be satisfied with it. Since it's shorter than the previous game, there's not much to collect aside from completing the game to fully unlock Dragon Shores as a playable level. I recommend this game to anyone who played through Spiral 1 and 3D platform fans along with the young Spiral fans.